the original Nissan Leaf enjoyed an enviable monopoly on the affordable electric vehicle segment when it made its debut in 2010. The brand new second generation model introduced recently is getting catapulted into the same ring, but times have changed and it's no longer the only option on the market for motorists who want to kick their gas habit without breaking the bank. One of its close rivals is the Tesla Model 3, the brand's much ballyhooed mass market model. The Leaf and the Model 3 are a lot alike in some ways, and polar opposites in others. We break down the differences and the similarities. Tech Features The Leaf ushers in Nissan's Pro Pilot Assist technology. Offered at an extra cost, it's a suite of electronic driving aids designed to help out when driving becomes tedious, dangerous, or plain boring. It functions in stop-and-go traffic on single-lane highways and it's active between 18 and 62 mph. It controls braking, acceleration, and steering. It doesn't turn the Leaf into a fully autonomous car, but Nissan hinted it will add more features to Pro Pilot Assist in the coming years. Full autonomy is the company's end goal, though it's several years away from becoming a reality. The Model 3 is available with Tesla's autopilot technology as an option. When the right conditions are met, the Model 3 is capable of changing lanes, reading speed limit signs, navigating freeway off ramps and even parking all by itself. Autopilot sets buyers back $5,000, so it's not cheap by any means, but it makes the Model 3 considerably more high-tech than the Leaf. Like Nissan, Tesla promises it will roll out full autonomy as soon as engineers, lawmakers, and consumers are finally in sync. Performance and range This is the area in which the LEAF and the Model 3 differ the most. The LEAF's driver train consists of an electric motor that zaps the front wheels with 147 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of instant torque. Its 40 kWh lithium-ion battery pack only provides 150 miles of range, which is much better than the last-gen model's 107-mile range but still not enough to tick the coveted long-range box. Nissan promises a second version of the Leaf with more power and more range will join the lineup in time for the 2019 model year. Rumors point to 200 miles of range, though nothing is official yet. Tesla has opted not to release official horsepower and torque figures for the Model 3. In its most basic configuration, the rear-wheel drive sedan offers a 50 kWh lithium-ion battery pack that delivers up to 220 miles of range. Buyers willing to spend an extra 9,000 Canadian dollars unlock a 70 kWh battery with 310 miles of range. The Model 3 performs a benchmark 0 to 60 mph sprint in 5.6 seconds with the smaller battery, and in 5.1 seconds with the bigger unit. Nissan hasn't released performance figures for the Leaf yet. Interior and Exterior Design Both EVs are well executed. The Leaf looks more grown up and far less alien ship-esque than its predecessor while the Model 3 adopts styling cues from the bigger Model S and Model X beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so we won't comment on which one looks better. The respective designs highlight the fact that, powertrain and price aside, the Leaf and the Model 3 are significantly different answers to the same question. The Leaf is a big hatchback developed with an emphasis on practicality and ease of use, and its style reflects that. The Model 3 is a compact sedan that plays the premium car to lure buyers away from the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and the BMW 3 Series, and it certainly looks the part. It's the same story when you open the door and take a peek inside the cabin. The Leaf has the components you'd expect to find in a non-electric car, including a digital instrument cluster, a three-spoke steering wheel, a touch screen, and a gear selector. They're all where you'd expect to find them too. The Model 3 takes a fabulously minimalist approach to design with a large, television-like touchscreen that replaces every single button, switch, and gauge. The sloping center console and the chrome highlights add an upscale touch that's lacking in the Leaf, while again highlighting its more upmarket positioning. Pricing and Availability 
The 2018 Nissan Leaf will arrive in showrooms early next year with a base price of $29,990, a figure that makes it nearly $700 cheaper than its predecessor. That's before incentives from the local and federal government are factored in. Getting one is straightforward, scratch together some cash or a loan, hightail it over to the nearest dealer, and drive home in a new car. There's no need to spend a year, or more, waiting in a virtual line. The Model 3 starts at $35,000 before incentives and options, like the long-range battery pack, are thrown into the equation. Tesla started production of the Model 3 in July, and the first cars are already crisscrossing the nation's roads, though the company admits it's in production hell right now. The company is working through a backlog of orders as it ramps up production, and delivery wait times are getting excruciatingly long. Customers who make a deposit in late 2017 might not receive their car until 2019. Nissan Motor Company Limited will show a number of exciting concept cars and production vehicles at this year's Tokyo Motor Show, giving customers a glimpse of the company's newest and future innovations. LEAF NISMO Concept Launched in September, the new Nissan LEAF comes with the latest iteration of Nissan's ProPilot single-lane autonomous driving technology. It also includes technology to help drivers park by automatically controlling the accelerator, brakes, steering, shift changing and parking brake. Another feature is e-pedal, which lets the driver start, accelerate, decelerate, stop and hold the car by using only the accelerator pedal. The NISMO concept version of the new LEAF has a sporty new exterior designed by NISMO, Nissan's motorsports and in-house tuning division. The application of NISMO racing technology to the car's body results in enhanced aerodynamic performance without sacrificing the LEAF's excellent drag coefficient. The black interior features NISMO's signature red accents, creating an exciting, high-performance feel. On the road, the LEAF NISMO concept offers a truly exciting drive. The LEAF NISMO concept combines the environmentally friendly character of an electric car with the exciting driving experience that's always been a hallmark of the NISMO brand. Serena NISMO the Serena NISMO offers NISMO's sporting technology, head-turning styling and exhilarating performance, without sacrificing the base model's family-friendly nature. The exterior design appropriately reflects NISMO's performance-oriented nature, with custom aero parts that enhance the aggressiveness of its appearance. Inside, occupants will enjoy NISMO's signature red accents. The Serena NISMO features sharper handling, thanks to a custom sport-tuned suspension system. A new engine control module and exhaust system add extra excitement and flair to the overall driving experience. The Serena NISMO is scheduled to go on sale in Japan in November 2017. Skyline Nissan's premium sport sedan has always featured cutting-edge technology that stirs the driver's emotions. All Skyline models now come with Nissan's all-around safety shield technology. This can be combined with a high-performance, environmentally friendly hybrid system and direct adaptive steering. Changes included a revamped exterior that spices up what was already one of the most attractive vehicles in its class. Inside, the steering wheel and shift knob are new, as is the instrument panel's surface finish, giving the interior an even higher premium quality. It is scheduled to go on sale in Japan in December. At the end of September, Toyota and Mazda announced they would form a joint venture with parts maker Dainsa to design, test, and build components for a shared electric car platform. Earlier interviews with Mazda indicate that the small Japanese maker will create its first all-electric model for volume production by putting a unique body on top of those underpinnings, also used by Toyota. On reflection, though, that rather begs the question, what about Subaru? 
The Japanese maker formerly referred to as Quirky continues to boost its U.S. sales of all-wheel drive crossovers, hatchbacks, and sedans. It's now had more than five solid years of month-over-month -month sales growth, in fact, doubling the capacity of its sole U.S. assembly plant in Indiana to meet the demand. But despite its strong reputation for outdoorsy, environmental, socially concerned owners, Subaru has done very little in hybrids and almost nothing in electric cars. It did produce several hundred examples of its low-volume Stella EV electric minicar, sold only in Japan, but the company killed that project in 2011. Its homegrown cross strike hybrid hatchback, sold from 2014 through 2016, was a mild hybrid that delivered only incremental fuel economy gains at the expense of some drivetrain smoothness. That car was quietly withdrawn from the lineup for 2017. Under the more aggressive California Zero Emission Vehicle Quotas that take effect for the 2018 model year, Subaru will have to offer at least some number of vehicles that can operate in zero emission mode some of the time. Indeed, the company says its first plug-in hybrid vehicle is coming next year. That will likely be a 2019 model, though whether it's the Crosstrek Compact Crossover Hatchback, the Forester Compact SUV, or the Outback Midsize Crossover remains to be seen. We have a plug-in hybrid coming soon, confirmed Michael McHale, at a Subaru's U.S. communications group, adding after further questioning it would arrive next year. As for battery electric models, however, McKay was circumspect. His sole comment ran as follows, In general, we are pursuing our own program, and will have a vehicle on the market in the 2020 timeframe. Indeed, Japanese media reports a year ago indicated that the company was developing its own, all-electric crossover utility for launch in 2021. That would correspond nicely to Mikhail's suggestion of an introduction in 2020. Meanwhile, its plug-in hybrid may be homegrown as well, or might use some elements of Toyota's hybrid system though vehicle engineers suggest that the Toyota hybrid transmission would be very difficult to adapt to the flat 4 engines Subaru uses. It's not surprising that fiercely independent Subaru is going its own way, since its experience with larger partner makers hasn't necessarily been positive. GM bought a 20% share of Subaru in December 1999, but sold most of its holdings back to Subaru in 2005, except for 8.7% that went to Toyota. The sole product from that marriage was the Subaru, a Subaru Impreza wagon dressed up to become the Saab 9-2X small car. Another Saab project, the 9-6X that was a similarly camouflaged Tribeca three-row crossover, never reached production after the sale and instead provided the basis for a quick update of the Tribeca's controversial styling. Toyota's first action as part owner was to build Camry sedans in the unused half of the Indiana plant, previously been shared with Isuzu, which had withdrawn from the U.S. market some years earlier. The joint development project that produced the Subaru BRZ and Toyota 86, Nissan FRS, two-seat sport coupe was reportedly fraught with disagreements among the two co engineers.